Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my special YouTube recording on my long tail keyword and all-in-one SEO versus Yoast SEO guide. In this guide, I'm going to provide an overview of Yoast SEO. I'm going to compare it briefly to all-in-one, although I don't know a lot about all-in-one. And I'm going to tell you what long tail keywords are. So let's get started with this right away with what we're going to cover in this course. First, I already mentioned we're going to do long tail keywords. We're going to talk about what they are, how to pick them, and why. Then next, we're going to look at the WordPress all-in-one SEO plugin versus the Yoast SEO plugin. These are the two most popular SEO plugins on WordPress. And I'm going to give you my input as far as what I like. And it's going to be brief and very one-sided. And from that, to give you a guess as to who we're going to pick, I'm going to talk about WordPress Yoast SEO plugin and how to use it. I'm going to show you some tricks and what it does. And it's really very simple. So there isn't a lot to show. Then I'm going to give you an introduction to Google Analytics, which is the way in which you'll track usage of your page to see how well your SEO is working. And then we'll talk about two final topics, which are WordPress tags SEO. People have asked about that on Google and so on. And Yoast SEO sitemap. So it Yoast automatically creates XML sitemaps for your site. So, without further ado, let's get on with long tail keywords. What are they? First of all, if you look at keywords, here I have a keyword chart. And what I'm showing you is that to the far left of the chart are the most competitive keywords. So, along the x axis on the bottom, is kind of lack of competition. So the further you go out there, the less competition there is. So on the far left, these are very competitive keywords. And the reason is because they generate a lot of traffic. So notice the orange bar on the left. If you were able to compete for a few high traffic keywords, maybe even just one, that's all you would need to drive all the traffic you need to your page. However, consider the other end of the chart. If you are able to compete for multiple long tail keywords, you could potentially drive just as much traffic without having to deal with all that competition. So the idea of long tail keywords is to go after the low competition keywords, those to the right here as far as high lack of competition and low traffic, get a bunch of them and use them instead of trying to go after keywords for which you will never rank. And let's take a look at that ranking and what these keywords look like. So here are some sample keywords. If you look on the left, you have high competition keywords, like the word keywords. That's a high competition keyword. If you try to uh, score or rank in Google search results for the keyword keyword, you're going to have a hard time. But what about my long tail keywords? That's a much longer keyword. It's much less popular. There's much less search traffic, but you're likely to search very high in the search results for this. So what if you were to take all of these long tail keywords over here? All in one SEO versus Yoast SEO. Yoast SEO guide, by the way, these top three keywords are the long tail keywords that I'm using to rank this video for. The equivalents would be just SEO, Yoast SEO, or Romance instead of Can Canada romance with dogs. Notice that if you get more specific with your keywords, they get longer, they become long tail, there's less competition and you're more likely to score for them. So go for those longer long tail keywords. That's what we're gonna do. Next, I wanna talk about all-in-one SEO versus Yoast SEO. These are the two most popular SEO plugins on WordPress. And for me, Yoast SEO wins down, hands down. It is just such an easy and elegant program to use that I love it. And the only way to show you that is to prove it by showing you the program. So let's go ahead and we're going to break out of this PowerPoint presentation and go look at the Yoast SEO program in action. Okay, here I am in my... WordPress website, and I'm on the dashboard. Now, the way that Yoast works is once you plug it in, it works with posts and pages. So let's go to all my posts, 
And you'll see that right up front, I start seeing my SEO score. So I'm green lighted as far as SEO and readability on this top article that I've been working on. And let's go ahead and look at the article and see how Yoast SEO implements itself while you're editing a post. So here's the text of the post and I've been writing it and so on. And down at the bottom, is the Yoast SEO Premium plugin. Now I paid for the Premium plugin, which gives you some added features, which we're gonna talk about, but it's really just more of the same features. So what is it doing here? First of all, it's telling you readability. Readability score tells you general things about the readability of your article. So use simpler words, use uh, at least 300 words between this and that, uh, use transition words, stuff like that to increase the readability of your article. Now, once your article is readable, what you get to do is with, with the premium plugin, you get up to five keywords to track. With just the standard free plugin, you only get one word, free word or one keyword to track. So let's take a look at the snippet editor here, and we can see that we can go and we can modify the title that will be displayed in Google search results, the slug line, and the meta description. And all of these things have keywords now in them, specifically these that I've listed up here to be tracked. And I'm getting a green light on them, so it's liking them. If we close the snippet editor, we can see the actual bullet items that Yoast SEO would like me to improve to increase the score of this post on the SEO keyword, WordPress SEO. And this is where you put your focus keywords, so the longer the better, as far as these long tail keywords, and it will tell you what you need to do to score for them. And it's that simple. So let's take a look. The focus keyword WordPress SEO does not appear in the SEO title. Let me see, WordPress SEO, it sure doesn't. There's the word on page in between WordPress and SEO, so it doesn't appear. This is a lesser keyword that I'm after, but on page SEO appears, long tail keywords appears, and Yoast SEO appears. So I'm tracking all of these keywords at once and going down here. Now, the red bulleted item, which we looked at there, that it didn't appear in the title is an important thing to correct. Orange bulleted items are less important and green bulleted items are those items that you have addressed. And it's that simple to use the Yoast SEO plugin. Now, in addition to getting multiple keywords, the premium version goes and scans your pages to see what they're about, and then puts a suggestion down here in the right-hand corner about pages that should be linked together to start link building within your site. So Yoast Pre uh, uh, SEO goes that far. Now, as far as how successful you are, at SEO, we're going to be using another tool, and this too is free, and it's called Google Analytics. Now, what Google Analytics will allow you to do is to set sites that you want to monitor. For instance, here on Author Brian Jackson, I have the Author Brian Jackson site, and I get all this data for it. Now, if I want to set up a site to start tracking Google Analytics, what I do is I go to the admin tab here. There's a lot of tabs. It's kind of confusing to get around Google Analytics. And I go to uh, tracking info and I say, give me the tracking code. And what it does is it gives me this little snippet, which I include in all of my pages. And this snippet is some little JavaScript and so on that will allow Google to track pages. Now, once that's done, then I can go to particular pages and I can see how they're doing. So let's let's go home and we'll go to all data for author Brian Jackson. And here I can see the number of sessions per day that have happened. This is one that I really like as far as the flow of users through my site. What it does is it shows you from the country of the United States, most of them came to my home page, some came to this page, and then you can see the number that dropped off and which pages they went to afterwards. You can see they're pretty much their navigation through my site. So we can see how effective my site is being at presenting itself.
So that's Google Analytics, something that you'll want to set up a free Google Analytics account, and you just pretty much use your Google account, and then set up a site, get the tracking code, and plug it in so you can start looking at these reports to see how effective your SEO is. And now what I want to talk about is WordPress tags SEO. Now, you can use tags to identify um, posts as being in particular categories. You can also use categories. Now, I recommend using categories as your primary means of kind of the sat site taxonomy navigation. And definitely what you should avoid and what I fear um, using tags might produce is that you have tags and categories competing. Try to avoid that. Don't have the same tag and category for a single post. And also avoid creating categories and tags for plurals. Things like don't have one for keyword and one for keywords. Next, and finally, we're going to talk about the fact that a Yoast SEO automatically sets up an XML sitemap for you and maintains it. You don't have to do anything to manipulate, the, to regenerate the sitemap or anything. Yoast SEO takes care of all that for you, so you're going to be properly indexed and presented to Google. And that's it for this presentation. I hope that it was useful, and I'm going to find other SEO topics out there that you've been looking for answers to and post them to YouTube. And I hope to see you in the next video lecture.